Justin from the Entertainment Outlet. I'm here with Ryan and Amir from Julian K. We're in New Bedford tonight. And uh, so, uh, as an indie band, Julian K. is not really a household name. Um, but as I was talking about this show to a lot of people, once I explained, they just were sort of like, oh, you know, I know who these guys are. Um, so for those who don't know, do you want to tell us a little bit about Julian K. and your history? Sure. Um, Julian K. rose from the ashes of the band Orgy. Um, Amir and I founded Orgy with Jay Gordon um, 18 years ago, I guess, maybe more. Um, we had a lot of success. We sold million, millions of albums. And the band along the way somehow stopped functioning as a band. And Amir and I never stopped. And uh, we kept making music. And um, in Orgy, I did a lot of the singing. And um, both, both of us wrote you know, a ton of the music. And we, we equally own all the music. So we've always been prolific writers and effective writers, and somehow I ended up becoming the lead singer of Julian K. Probably because of Chester Bennington. Yeah. Um, he kind of kicked me in the ass, and Amir and Chester kind of uh, encouraged me and kind of gave me the uh, gave me the um, I don't know the confidence to kind of move forward as a lead singer. And here we are now. Here we are playing some really really big shows and some really really small shows. Uh, so you guys have been writing together for for decades now. Uh, how has the that hurts. <laughs> uh, the collaboration process between the t two of you you know has it changed much over the years? Well, I think it has changed a bit actually. Um, I think that he has he'll have a lot to say about this, but um, I can say that um, you know in Orgy it was a it was a pretty dysfunctional situation to be honest. Um, we still write in a very similar format to the way that we did an orgy, you know, very much like a hip hop band. I mean, we program and we play guitars into computers and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, Amir and I definitely have roles now, you know, and he's very much a producer and, uh, and, and this kind of big picture type of guy. And um, I'm very much a singer songwriter type of guy. Um, and we're very comfortable in that. And we, we kind of know what's up and I know what to expect and we're, we're a bit ruthless, and we uh, with ourselves. You know, we don't fuck around. We don't take years to put out an album. We don't, you know, we sit down and we write a great song, and we'll do it in one night. Right. We'll fucking get it done, and that's uh, discipline. You know, so that that's changed, and I think you'll probably have more comments than me on that. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess different than the orgy days where you know we would. It would take three days just to get a song started sometimes, and then it would just sit there right. <laughs> for months, for months yeah. and months, and then maybe, you know. But, you know, it was always a bit of a collaborative thing. Um, I think with Julian Kay, though, it's, it's definitely most of the songs tend to stem from Ryan or myself. Um, we do also work with outside writers and um, the other guys that are playing with us now, Biddy and... And Alex also can write, and um, they've participated a lot on the on the new album, and have even brought ideas in. And even Fu, uh, our third member, uh, the the sort of triangle of of Julian K over many years, who isn't here right now because he couldn't tour with us. Um, <coughs> he even you know came in with a with the song idea as well. So we're always open to like work not only with our friends but our fellow bandmates whoever you know is around if something is going to fit the the sort of concept of uh, whatever the, that, the album we're working on at that time all of our albums tend to have some sort of a concept yep. um, so I try to I'm kind of the concept police I guess <laughs> um, I usually give out a lot of style counsel and things beforehand and then just kind of help steer it as it goes along and like Ryan said he's he's more of a singer songwriter so a lot of times he'll come in with the you know vocal ideas melodies and and music where you know I guess for me I'm more of a conceptual writer so sometimes I'll come up with a song title and I'll lay out all the music and everything and then bring it to everybody and see, you know, I, w I usually won't bring anything in unless I feel like it's, it's pretty good. Like if I feel like it's pretty good, I feel like they're probably going to like it. Right. So, you know, I'll, I'll create a few things and sometimes it's something I'll do 
in the very beginning to kind of show like, hey, this is what I'm thinking for the overall. Doesn't mean that the overall concept will be exactly like that, but it helps kind of drive it and focus it. And um, <clears throat> I think that, uh, I think it's, it's a pretty interesting way to, to create each of our records and they're all very different, right. you know, and they continue to be different. Um, the newer album is gonna kind of go back to some of our roots of death to analog, orgy, all that kind of stuff, but it's still gonna sound different, right. you know? It's like every time we do something, there's always some new flavor, some new thing that gets thrown into the, into the pot. So I think fans are gonna dig it though because it, it will have all those elements that I think that they're sort of longing to hear um, but a lot of new stuff too, as usual. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, so tell me about the new album. It's Harmonic Disruptor. Uh, I was checking out the Indiegogo campaign for it. It, it sounds heavy. It's, it sounds cool from what I hear so far. Uh, so tell me a little bit about it. Um, we kind of recognized, or actually a mirror more in this album. Uh, California Noir was a little bit more uh, a, a concept that I came up with um, it, that the band gravitated towards and liked. Um, and in Harmonic Disruptor was very much something that Amir's been thinking for a couple of years now, I think. And that is that no one is really doing what we did. You know, no one's doing what Orgy did in the right. beginning. You know, Orgy's not doing it. Um, you know, Jay's not doing it. So, um, you know, we, we, he, he, we've been talking about this for a while. And we started breaking out our old, you know, guitars, our seven strings, our baritones, our detuned stuff. And Amir's like, you know what, I want to go back and I want to make... I want to make this music again. I want to do it obviously in a new way and make it fresh and feel good and new songs. But I want to bring that feeling back because I don't think anyone's doing it right now. And who has more of a right than us? Right. And um, I started getting you know into listening to Nine Inch Nails, Broken, like all the, the stuff in the 90s that really fucking shook my tree. Just like, you know, made me go, yeah, fuck, I, I'll never be this good. Well, now I am this good, and we are this good, and uh, and we're going to bring back a lot of those feelings that I think made um, so much of music so special for all of us and our fans. And I think it's going to be a fan pleasing album, and um, I think it's going to be a heavy album. It's going to have a lot of emotion because we have to deal with a lot of uh, the loss of Chester, um, which gave Harmonic Disruptor a whole new meaning. Um, it did have a meaning before. Now it now it really has a meaning. Right. So um, it's gonna, all that's gonna come out in an album, and it's gonna fucking hurt, but it's gonna be badass. That's awesome. I think I think our fans, anyone who loved Orgy and loves Death the Analog and loves Julian K and what we're doing now, you're gonna be so happy. Yeah, I can't wait. We're like making Christmas for you. Uh, speaking of the old guitars, uh, I'm not trying to make anyone feel old, but when I was in high school, I had all the, you know, guitar <laughs> magazines. I cut out pictures, had them all up on the wall, mm -hmm. and uh, there's nothing. One of the most iconic things I remember is the Roswell Rhodes guitar mm -hmm. in the Orgy photos. Uh, so how did you how did you find the Roswell Rhodes, or did it find you? And you know, do you still play them, or are you, you create it? Um, well, the Roswell Rhodes is actually different than the Roswell Star, no. which is what I helped um, modify. They 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 had made this aluminum guitar. Um, that was kind of very spacey or whatever, and I, I saw it and I was just like, wow, this is, this is really cool. And I'd had some ideas that I wanted to try too. And so I'd been with Jackson early, you know, in the 80s in my, in my old band and had worked with Grover Jackson, um, creating like custom stuff. We, we actually created, uh, I don't know if it was the first, maybe it was the first Jackson double neck. Um, that I helped design and had like connecting headstocks and all this crazy stuff. Um, Grover was no longer there, but there were other people that were still there that were from that time and they had approached me when we were in Orgy and said, look, you know, we would really love to have you come back here and, you know, we miss all your crazy ideas and, <laughs> and all this stuff. So I was like, okay, I was intrigued. So the first thing we did was was to create the the Roswell star or the Roswellian star it's got different names but um, I'd really wanted a star body again because actually the first um, one of the first guitars I ever had was a Charvel star body that was kind of purple and 
for Orgy, I was looking for something weird, and I was already, I think I was already playing Parkers, which were great, um, and but weird looking and, and not conventional, so I was kind of the poster boy for Parker at that time. Um, <clears throat> so we started looking at some stuff, and, and um, since I had wanted to do a star, we decided that, well, I wonder if we could modify this guitar and, and make it out of wood, and turn it into something different, you know, and so right. that's what we did, and it came out amazing, and the other thing, they were they were sort of experimenting at the time with these, like, color-changing paints, these, like, chameleon paints, which um, I think at the time were really expensive. Now you can see cars painted like that and stuff, but <clears throat> so we decided to, to try this chameleon paint, you know, do this whole crazy thing, and Little by little, I started modifying it more and more and more, and then I eventually created the Disruptor, which was a completely unique design um, that I did. But that's kind of how it came about, and it's uh, it's a very it's actually a really good sounding guitar. Um, I have used it recently. I don't really typically tour um, with them because they're too valuable now. <laughs> they're really rare and. Um, amazing guitars. So I did use a, a black one in the mannequinized video. You can check it out. Um, Very cool. <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's a pretty cool. Yeah, it's I iconic for sure. Oh, thanks. Um, so you guys are out. You're doing a bunch of shows with the Rev Three tour with mm -hmm. uh, Bush, Stone Temple Pilots, and the Cult. And so you're doing some small shows like this on the days in between. Mm -hmm. How do you approach those shows differently? Do you approach them differently? Totally. Absolutely. We're playing with uh, some iconic rock bands. Uh, the cool thing about being in Julian K is that we are a heavily electronic band, but we are also a band. You know, we have rock, we have some heavy music. Mm -hmm. And just like a, a, any good DJ, we're going to play to the room. You know, so for those shows, we're going to play some songs that, um, you know, we only have a few songs, right? Because we're the opening band and we're playing these giant fucking, you know, t typically there, it's going to look kind of empty, but there's actually like 2,000 people there, right? But right. it's just spread out over 15,000 seats, yeah. right? So you have to keep that in your, in your, in your brain when you, when you go out there. And um, we've been doing, doing really, really well. And the, you have to look at every single person and see them all breaking their cameras out and starting to film. And uh, you got to play some stuff that's a little bit more guitar heavy um, and a little bit more... Um, you know, something that goes a little bit better with those particular bands. Something we couldn't do is, you know, or shouldn't do, because I think it's a little tone deaf, is you don't go out there and play Spectrometer or something where <laughs> none of us have guitars at all. We're playing iPads and, and keyboards and, you know, I'm singing falsetto and it's all really, really cool stuff. I love it, but um, yeah. that would be the wrong move for that, you know, for those shows. Just like all those bands also tailor their sets to go kind of together and to be one show. Yeah. Um, so that you're going to see us in a little bit different light out there for our shows t like tonight and a much smaller Julian K show. Um, well, we've got all the keyboards out. We've got the, we've got the, you know, we use iPads as, uh, as sequencers and sample pads and everything. We, you know, just think, think technology, think economical, and we've come up with all these cool ways to do what we do. Um, and that'll be the difference uh, between the sets. You know, we, we really can kind of play whatever we want on our own sets. Yeah, we get to play a, a lot longer set. I mean, we're playing over an hour, so we get to play a little of every every album. Right. We've we have our own light show. Yeah, for um, a band to come out with a with a fifteen thousand dollars worth of lights, even though it's not, you know, it's just something special. You know, programmed to our music and everything. Yeah. It's kind of kind of cool, yeah. you know. For sure. And each tour we do, we're going to be able to make that more and more impressive because each run we do, we're able to add another component because we can afford it. Right. You know, it's kind of fun, Definitely. kind of fun. Different than playing during the day with, <laughs> <laughs> with the Rev3 tour. Hey, but by the way, that tour, I gotta say, those bands have been fucking amazing to us. Yep. That crew and that yep. staff, yes, I'm gonna say it tomorrow on stage because we're gonna have, I have two days left to like thank everyone. There's not enough thanks. Yeah, I, they've been They've been really cool to us. <laughs> oh, that, that's awesome. They've, they're yeah. watching our set every night, <coughs> fucking patting us on the backs, congratulating us. I mean, they're taking care of us. They're, I, I, I couldn't ask for a, a nicer group, uh, group of people, honestly. That's awesome. It's great to see you guys on a big tour like that. It's nice to be back. <laughs> it's been a long walk in the desert, but right. we're, we're starting to figure shit out. Um, 
You had mentioned Chester earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I love the Dead by Sunrise album that Thank you guys you so did much. together. So do we. Um, We're going to play some this year. Are you? Yeah. Um, For him. Was there, was there anything left over that you guys recorded but didn't make the cut? Do you have any... You know, sort of leftover tracks that maybe were unfinished. Is there any chance? There, there, there is. Not as much as we would like. Not as much as Time Capsule, our, our Julian K project. There is some stuff. There are also performances that are filmed and that are unique. Like we played an entire acoustic show and we have it all on HD wow. and we have the entire board mix. Um, there's some, and, and, and that was the first time we played live together. And I remember Chester walked off, we are walking off together and Chester goes, let's just do this, because <laughs> it was so good. And it actually launched our ability to play acoustically because we never thought of that, right? I mean, even Amir and I think we're so fucking smart, right? Um, we never thought like, what if Julian Kay played acoustic? Well, we had to do it with Chester first and it was so fucking good. We were just like, now some of our bit, our biggest and best shows are acoustic. Julian K, acoustically, yeah. Me, Amir, two acoustic, acoustic guitars, Biddy, an acoustic bass, and maybe a drum machine or something for fun. Right. Like, we do the coolest stuff, and that was uh, really, I give credit to Chester. Awesome. But we have all that stuff. But we gotta figure out how to do it. Yeah. How to put it out. Right, for sure. Uh, well, awesome. Thank you guys for taking some time with me today. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to Harmonic Disruptor and awesome. hope to see you guys uh, you know, continue to stay on the road and stay busy and see you soon. There it is. Yes, please, uh, please uh, participate in our Indiegogo campaign. We have been number one five campaigns in a row. Number one in the world. This is the Harmonic Disruptor uh, 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 campaign on Indiegogo. We're like at 800% raised, I think, right now. So anyways, awesome. it's, we're in demand now. So thank you so much. It's our last campaign ever. Well, thank you, guys. Have a great show tonight. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah.